In this tutorial, we will learn how to apply the four-fifths rule in Excel. The four-fifths rule is used to determine whether or not there's evidence of disparate impact, which is sometimes called adverse impact. And so working with this Excel data file that you see here, this Excel workbook, you'll see that we have two sheets or two tabs at the bottom here. One is for a knowledge test, and let's imagine this is a selection tool or procedure that assesses candidates or applicants' knowledge on a particular um, type of content that's relevant for a job. And the other is a physical ability test, also part of a selection tool or a selection procedure. So let's start with the knowledge test first. And so you'll note here that we have our observed data. And you can imagine that we've already pulled these data, we've already queried these data from um, our information system. And so what we see now is we have a cross tabulation table here. And so you'll see that we have four cells containing numeric values. And these correspond to men and women in relation to pass and fail on the knowledge test. And so here we have the gender variable here is represented by men and women. And the test variable, specifically the test scoring variable, is represented by pass versus fail. So a dichotomous, you either passed it or you failed this. And so we can see that 70 men passed the test, this knowledge test, 90 failed. For women, 42 passed this test and 72 failed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work through and we're going to calculate first the selection ratios for men and women with respect to this knowledge test. And then we're actually going to calculate what's called an impact ratio. Before we do that, though, let's actually make a notation here and create a label here for this column. Let's call this column here in cell D2, let's call it row sum. And so this is actually just a row marginal. We're just calculating the row totals here. So what we're trying to do is calculate the total number of men that participated in this knowledge test. So we're just taking 70 plus 90. And to do so, we can create right here, using the equal sign, a formula in Excel. And we can use the sum function from Excel. So it's SUM, all capitalized, and then a parenthesis. And we can just drag across here and identify these two cells, which in this case correspond to B3 and C3. And when you're selecting a range or an array of cells in Excel, you can use a col or you can use a colon to indicate that this range extends from cell B3 to C3. And then we can close it out by adding a parenthesis here and then hitting enter. So you'll see that the total number of men who participated in the knowledge test is 160. Now let's do the same thing for women. Now, one easy thing you can do in Excel is you can actually just drop this down here. And so what this has done is we've actually just pulled this same formula that we used above, and now we're just applying it to the cells in the row below. And we can verify this by clicking on this formula here, and we can see indeed we've just calculated the sum for these two cells, which are the pass and fail numbers for women. So the number of women who pass, the number of women who failed, and that happens to be cells B4 through C4 and that is 114. So now we have our respective sample size, sizes for each of these protected groups. So one protected group is men, one is women, and they both are part of this protected class um, within the United States of sex, and by extension, um, protections for gender, identity, and so forth. Okay, now let's take a look at the selection ratios. And first I'm gonna make a note here and I'm going to call this first selection ratio, or I'm first going to designate what I'm going to use as an abbreviation for selection ratio, which is SR. So I'm going to note here that SR equals selection ratio. Now I've already programmed this and already indica indicated that I want these to be bold cells here, but all, you could do any kind of formatting you want here. I like to use bold so it stands out a little bit more. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is let's calculate the selection ratio for men. So I'll do men, SR, and then colon to indicate that this is going to be the label that will actually calculate the selection ratio over here in the adjacent cell to the right. And let's do the same thing for women. Women, SR for women's selection ratio. Okay, so now we're ready to, collect, uh, to actually calculate or compute the selection ratio based on the data here. Okay, and so the selection ratio is just simply, in this context, the number of people who passed the exam relative to the total number of people who took the exam. And we're gonna be looking within this particular subgroup of men here. So we're essentially saying we want 70 divided by 160 here, the number of passed divided by the total number of people who participated in this particular knowledge test here. 
So using Excel, we can just do the equal sign to create a formula and do 70 division sign one divided by 160. So this happens to correspond to cells B3 and D3 in this instance. And then we can hit enter on our keyboard. And so what you'll see here is this is the selection ratio. And sometimes we refer to the selection ratio as just simply the selection rate. Sometimes you might see it referred to as the hiring rate as well, depending upon what the ultimate goal of this particular selection test is. Um, but here we see the selection ratio for men is 0.44. So this is proportion, and you could interpret this as 44% of men who participated in the knowledge test pass the knowledge test. All right, so now let's do the same thing for women here. And so we're just going to take, create an equal sign here. And we're going to take the number of women who passed this, this knowledge test here, which was 42. And this corresponds to cell B4 divided by the number who, the total number of, of women who participated in this knowledge test, which is 114, which corresponds to cell D4. So you'll see that represented in our formula and we can hit enter here. So now we have the selection ratio for women. The selection ratio for women here is 0.37, or in other words, 37% of women who participated in the knowledge test passed the knowledge test. The remaining failed it. And so now our question is, is there evidence of adverse impact using the four-fifths rule, um, which is advocated for or encouraged by um, US law, US employment law? Well, how do we determine how to calculate the whether or not there is evidence of violation of the four-fifths rule. Well, first, let's identify which group is going to be our reference group and which group is going to be our focal group. Typically, you're going to take the group that has the lowest selection ratio is going to be your focal group. And then you're going to compare it to another group that is the referent group that is typically going to have a higher selection ratio. Now, most often, um, you'll see this done with, at least in the United States context of many organizations, it'll be the selection rate of women relative to men. Um, and that's because that tends to be how we see the bias play out in some of our selection tools and selection systems and so forth. But it doesn't necessarily have to be in that direction. So just find the selection rate that's lowest and divide it by the one that's highest. So what is it called when we divide two selection ratios? Well, this is actually called an impact ratio. Sometimes it's also referred to as an adverse impact ratio, or an AIR, or just simply an IR. Okay, so how do we calculate that impact ratio? Well, let's just create a formula equals, and we take the selection ratio of our focal group, which is the selection ratio for women here, and we divide it by the selection ratio for men, which is our referent group. Okay, so this happens to be here, cells B8 divided by B7. Let's hit enter. And here we see that the impact ratio is 0.84. Now, the four-fifths rule, we think about what the four fifths rule means. It's four divided by five. And if you were to take four divided by five here, you'll find that it's equal to 0.8 or it's 80%. And so what this rule, if we're going to determine whether or not there's initial evidence uh, or potential evidence of adverse impact or disparate impact based on the four fifths rule, the way we determine that is by comparing the impact ratio to 0.8. And so here the impact ratio is 0.84 because this is greater than 0.8, we would say that there's not evidence according to the four fifths rule of, of disparate impact or adverse impact here with respect to the knowledge test and comparing women relative to men, okay? Now, if we had seen the impact ratio being 0.8 exactly, typically we'd say that there's still no violation. What we're looking for is an impact ratio that's below 0.8, and that would indicate potential evidence of did of disparate or adverse impact uh, for this particular uh, selection tool, which is knowledge test with respect to women relative to men here. Okay, so we can conclude by saying no violation of the four fifths rule. All right, so now let's try another example. And this time, let's Go over here to the sheet or the tab at the bottom for the physical ability selection tool test here. Okay, so we're going to do essentially the exact same thing here. Let me see what this the magnification was here, 140. So we can have that at the same level of mag magnification. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to create the row sum here label, and I'm going to use the equal sum 
formula or function from Excel, highlight this array of cells here. This is sometimes called a vector of cells. Close it out with the ending parenthesis, hit enter. We can see there's a total here of black individuals who completed the, not, uh, the physical ability test is 206 individuals. Let's see what the total number of white individuals who completed the physical ability test is. So let's do equal sign sum. Highlight this array here, closing parenthesis, hit enter. And we see that it's 114. Okay, so now we are ready to complete the selection ratio computations and then ultimately the impact ratio comp computation. I'm gonna make that same note here that SR equals selection ratio, just so we're clear on that. And let's calculate the selection ratio first, by, and let's create a label here like we did for men and women, but this time it's for black and white individuals. And this one is the uh, black selection ratio label. And then let's do a label for the white selection ratio. All right, so to calculate the black selection ratio, we will use a formula here and say that um, equals pass divided by total number of black individuals who participated in this physical ability test. And that's a selection ratio of 0.32. So 32% of uh, black individuals, let's say black applicants who took and participated in this physical ability test passed it. Let's do the same thing for the white applicants or white individuals who participated in this test. So we'll take the number of white individuals who passed divided by the total number who participated. And we get a selection ratio of 44.44, which is 44% passed. Okay, so let's note that we're gonna create the impact ratio next and to the right of that label here, we are just gonna do exactly what we did before. And as if you recall, I said that Typically, we take the selection ratio that is lowest and the group that's associated with that selection ratio, we say that is our focal group. And then the group that has the higher selection ratio, we say that is our referent or comparison group here. So in this case, we're going to take the, the black selection ratio and divide it by the white selection ratio. Hit enter. And here we see that that selection ratio or the impact ratio here is 0.73. Remember, the four-fifths rule is four divided by five, and that comes out to be 0.8. And so here we would say this is a violation of the four-fifths rule, which means that there is evidence in this case based on the four-fifths rule of adverse impact, which is also called disparate impact here, okay? And that is because this impact ratio is less than four-fifths or 0.8 or 80%, however you wanna think about that value. Okay, so this wraps up the Excel tutorial on how to apply the four-fifths rule.